Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by the absolute mad lad Sean D. Uh, well, who donated to see this deck in action, which I guess we'll call Blazing in fact. Uh, so we'll start with the regular portion and then we'll get to the spice. So the normal idea is that we use Inkmoth Nexus or Blighted Agent with Blazing Shoal. You can exile a red card with mana cost X from your hand rather than play this spell's mana cost and target creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn. So the idea is like you swing in with an infect creature and then you pitch one of these dragons which has a ridiculous mana cost and you go and kill your opponent in a single shot. That's quote unquote the plan. And then there's this other card, Minion of the Mighty. Uh, it's a new card from the Dungeons and Dragons set with menace and pack tactics. Whenever it attacks, if you attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, you may put a dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. So the idea here is that we can either scale this up or blazing shoal it, and then we get to dump a dragon into hand. Uh, and these things are like definitely in the like we're never going to hard cast these in the league sort of range. So we have dragon mage, um, when it deals combat to damage to a player, each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. We have Dragon Tyrant, which is a flying trample double striker, um, which has a rather ridiculous, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this unless you can pay four mana. Uh, so we're getting in exactly one hit with that. And then there's the Ur Dragon. Um, as long as it is in the command zone or on the battlefield, other dragon spells you control or you cast, cost one less to cast, and whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you can put your per a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, so we're going to be doing stuff this league. Uh, the other sort of interesting thing here is that we also have Fury of the Horde. You can exile two red cards from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase uh, followed by an additional main phase. Now, Sean's original deck list had one Hull Breacher and three Days Undoing in it, which, uh, to be honest, I didn't think made any sense and didn't really fit into the deck plan. Like, I get the Hull Breacher, Dragon Mage synergy and whatnot, um, but I just added four more cantrips. The original version had two Brainstorms and two Ponders, and I looked at that and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, we can play Jank. But, like, we need to try to make the jank consistent. Um, so I added in those extra cantrips. Because, like, we have a lot of different things we can assemble. And, like, sometimes we're going to need red cards in hand for these pitch spells. Like, sometimes we're going to need the infect creature or the scale up for the minion of the mighty. I think we, we just need the cantrips too badly. Um, there, are, there are some non-bows in the deck. Like, we have a couple of dazes. Uh, and we are playing a taiga. Um, just so we have access to that uh, that off of fetch, and like it doesn't work super well the Inkmon Nexus either, but I think that's an acceptable cost. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, Sean's original sideboard was, well, it was cute, uh, so I redid it. Um, there, there was like acid rains and some ridiculous dragons in there, and there, there were fun cards, but. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to at least win a few matches today. I Sean's original version had one defense grid. I bumped that up to three. I just don't want my opponent interacting with me on my turn. There's cheaper options like Xanted Swarm or Hope of Girapur, but defense grid felt right to me. I'm playing three Pithing Needles because it's something that can hate on Wasteland, which I think will be good against this deck, while also just stopping various Planeswalkers or Urza Sagas. You know whatever it is I need to do. And then I, uh, Sean's original version had some expensive removal, uh, like is it Staticasters in here? And I, I think my removal just needs to be lower to the ground. Uh, so I'm going to try Blazing Volleys and Braids. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and hop into the league. Uh, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content seven days a week. If you are subscribed, throw me a like. It's the easiest way to support my content. And if you want to try out this deck, the link is available via Top Deck in the video description, as is my donation information if you want to get your own video on stream. Your own deck on stream. On YouTube. Whatever. All right, let's battle. So my round one opening hand has a turn two kill with Day's backup. Don't do it. 
Don't disrupt this shit. No. The jig is up. <laughs> Damn it. All right, I have lost the days. So if I lose the days, that, means, that makes me think my opponent is a combo deck. Or that they can just interact with my attempted turn two kill. I think I'm still going to like just lead on Ink Moth Nexus and pass here. It's it's possible I'm supposed to play Volcanic Island and try to brainstorm into a counterspell if my opponent tries to like go off, but you know. I think I'm here to YOLO. Oh that's sad. Also, why the fuck did you not wasteland me? Now I get to play the blighted agent that you knew about from my hand. That seems like a poor play. Like I don't I don't know what it looks like from my opponent's side. Um but that seems super loose to me. Like, now they're going to cast a removal spell. I think I let that resolve and force a will what comes afterwards. And yeah, we'll force that. <clears throat> and now you die, because you didn't waste land my Ink Moth Nexus when you had perfect information. I guess my opponent can still have, like, a fatal push. That seems to be why they didn't Dark Ritual, right? Or why they did Dark Ritual, because otherwise they could have just tapped out. Or maybe they just wanted to hold up Wasteland. Yeah, whatever. Let's send them in. So if I pitch Fury of the Horde, that's only plus seven, so I need to pitch Dragon Tyrant. Now let me do this on the Blighted Agent. And see if my opponent dies. Yes, uh, my opponent, in fact, did die. Um, they, they just lost that game to themselves. Uh, I, I don't mean to, like, berate the play, but, like... I have two lands and a Blighted Agent. If you just take out the Ink Moth Nexus early, I can't play this Blighted Agent, and then like I, I sit around and do nothing for the rest of the game in all likelihood. Um, I probably need Force of Negation. I'm not sure how much beyond that I actually want to play. Um, like I, I, I don't like that I have to assemble multiple cards, and that my opponent probably has just a giant pile of, like, smallpox-esque cards that can really fuck with my creatures, and they have wastelands for ink moths. Maybe I need to be thinking about Pithing Needle as well. I think Fury of the Horde is very unlikely to work this game. Like, exiling two red cards from my hand is a pretty big ask. This, if I board these out, I'll have fewer things for the uh, the Blazing Shoal. Actually, pitch isn't the best, but this one's not lethal anyway. I'm going to use this to deal with Wastelands. Real important as a game goes along, and my opponent probably can't answer, answer Pithing Needle. This can also answer like Lilies and stuff. And then on the draw, I don't think Daze is going to be good against the Dark Ritual deck. I don't think Flusterstorm's crazy, um, but I also don't think it's the nuts. This hand is medium. It has two different creatures. I, I don't have a way to like pump them or, or like combo off instantly. I have a cantrip and the ability to force a will one thing. I think this hand is a keep despite the fact that it doesn't really do what I want it to do yet. One has mulligan to five. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of weird, but be like because this hand is just medium, and it doesn't like do everything yet, you can't really pick apart this hand. Like if you take one of these two, I'll like I'll know which plan I need to start working towards with the brainstorm. So it's very possible you just take the brainstorm here and kind of like try to strand me with an awkward hand. All right. They are scared of the minion of the mighty. Okay, there's there's part one. Um, I think I just want to play a fetch land and pass. I don't want to uh, get wastelanded in this turn cycle before I play the Blighted Agent. That's really awkward. Uh, Alright. I will grab a trap and brainstorm. I'm not happy about it. Like, this is not how I wanted to use this fetch land and this brainstorm. Awkward. All, all just awkward. I'm going to hide the Blighted Agent. And I guess a land... Uh, like, I don't really care if they take the scale up. Like, as long as I counter their removal spells, I, I have a threat in play, and I'll have two forces. 
So after some deliberation, my opponent took the dragon. And I will just play the Blighted Agent. And we'll go from there. Yes, your Cling to Dust is totally fine. Very surprised that's still in the deck. Okay. Uh, so, like, you know I have a scale up. And you're not going to wasteland the Tropical Island. Okay. So you played around Force of Negation when you know every card in my hand. Interesting. I'll go ahead and take the infect damage now on this. Yeah, that was a that was a lot of infect damage that my opponent did not need to take. Why am I still allowed to have lands? Also, why did you sacrifice your win condition if you weren't just gonna fire this off immediately? Uh I'm just confused. Sure. Alright, uh, we're gonna play some Drago for a while. And this is the Cling to Dust flashback. Alright. Um, I am just gonna play this out rather than wait uh, to have Force Negation back up. I don't, I don't think this is a time where I get to just like wait and play around everything because like my opponent could get bored and wasteland me and take me off of these sources and then I can't cast it. Yeah. Okay. I'll crash in for one. Push my opponent to seven. I'll play the Minion of the Mighty. The Minion of the Mighty is not particularly strong here. The big thing that it does is just means that an Edict effect does not uh, outright kill me. Cast this Pithing Needle. Uh-huh. There's a Saga. I'm going to keep my opponent from getting a second Construct here. They'll still get to tutor. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the Pox Dex lists to know if they have something like a Cursed Scroll that I need to play around here. It's possible there is, and I'm supposed to just blind name that. The, the, the opportunity cost of being wrong is so high, though. Yep. Oh, that sucks. That's quite good here. Probably don't come back from this position. And then the Curse Scroll gets to blow up the Minion of the Mighty. Right, and Urborg is their last card. I'll go to 15. Um, this one's probably lost here. Note that I am still happy with my Pithing Needle name. I don't think that was a mistake. Um, the Curse Scroll is great, but if my opponent had two different... Um, Urza's Saga constructs, and then they had just like fetched something like a Retrofitter Foundry, like that stuff, plus his Lily, probably also just beats me. Eh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and concede here. I just don't think I'm going to beat what my opponent has going on. Um, do I want to change anything now, knowing that my opponent has Urza's Saga? I don't think so. The Daze has become a little more attractive. They're still pretty awkward. All right. What's our opening hand look like? Add? Like, this can double force a will, but I have no plan here. And if I brainstorm lock myself, I think I die immediately. I'm gonna go ahead and just mulligan this. Um, this is a theoretical turn two kill. I guess I'll keep. If my opponent thoughts uses me, they take Blazing Shoal. So it won't matter if I have two of these or not. So I think I'd rather keep my extra lands because of things like smallpox. And I'll just pitch the Dragon Tyrant. Nexus, go! Do you have the Wasteland? Dark Ritual is fine. Thoughtsies is annoying. Alright, as expected, I lose the Blazing Shoal. And him to Turok. Sure. I think this is just going to be a Pithing Needle Wasteland turn, so I never lose to that. I think I'm all in on this Ink Moth Nexus winning me the game. But the next question is, like, do I actually just ponder this turn? I think I will. Alright, I think I am more likely to want to cast a scale up than a minion of the mighty this game, so I'm going to grab Chop. And we're looking for a decent ponder. Is, is two ink moths that can never be wastelanded good enough to win? I think I would be willing to assume the answer is yes. Uh, uh, activating the second one, rough, with these cards. I'll go ahead and shuffle. Alright. And let's shut off Wasteland. See if my... <laughs> nice. Take that value. Alright. I know my opponent has access to like a Curse Scroll in a couple turns. So that's something that's coming. 
If they have a pithing needle, shutting off my ink moth nexus is also kind of a pain in the ass. Um, not really much to be done about that though. Like I can, I can pivot into other plans theoretically by like drawing a brainstorm. Okay. I presume you make a construct. Yep. And we'll see what their tutor package looks like. Okay, they do have a needle. Okay. As expected, it names Inkmoth Nexus. Sure, a bog doesn't do anything. I'm just gonna die in like three turns. When this animates, it's gonna increase the size of the constructs, so this is really 10 damage. I need to play this out. And then I believe to have any chance in the game, I need to not play this Taiga, and then I need to draw Brainstorm as my next draw. And I think if I don't hit Brainstorm, I'm dead. I also think I'm dead if this minion of the mighty dies this turn cycle. Classic. I believe I now have no outs. Yeah, I'll take 10. All right, I wasn't drawing the brainstorm anyway. GG's. Okay, so I'm not sure how aggressively I'm supposed to mulligan with this deck. So like, this is a hand that needs two things to win. It needs a, a Blazing Shoal, and it needs a land. I have three cantrips. Is this hand to keep when, like, I basically have to use the Ponder to find a land, and then I'm somewhat likely to brainstorm lock myself afterwards? Like, if this is a normal Infect deck, this is unquestionably a keep. This is not a normal Infect deck, right? So, like, how often am I supposed to mulligan a somewhat reasonable hand in order to try to find the nuts? I, I don't know the answer to that question yet. Like, this is my third, maybe fourth game with this deck. I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. Um, this hand is missing one piece. If I find a Blazing Shoal, I win. I like this hand better, um, even though it's slightly awkward in some ways. Uh, let's just pitch the taiga here. All right. I don't like this land. This land is usually unfair shit. I th I think I am supposed to just lead on my ink moth nexus rather than uh, like brainstorm to specifically find force of will. Because if we're not actually playing against black red reanimator, this is the play that I want to make. All right, underground C. More indicative of something like doomsday. All right. That was a pretty lengthy brainstorm opponent had some difficult decisions of one kind or another. Ooh. Yeah, that's uh that's unfair stuff. Drop blazing volley, drop blazing volley, shit. Okay. Um Do I fetch the Valk now? Prior to pondering. Probably not. Things go wrong, I want to save it for the brainstorm next turn. I am, I am very specifically looking for exactly one card. Uh, none of those are the card I am looking for. Um, Minion of the Mighty is interesting, though. So next turn, I could play Minion of the Mighty. The following turn, I can scale it up, and then I would get to put the Ur Dragon into play. And that would be 16 damage. That's not lethal. It will kill over... So if I, if I keep Minion of the Mighty, it kills over three turns. I do not think killing over three turns is acceptable. I think I'd die if I try to kill over three turns. So I, I'm going to shuffle and try to stay on plan of, like, find a blazing, uh, blazing shoal. I found a brainstorm. So I will get four looks next turn at a blazing shoal in an attempt to kill. Let's see if I die. If I have one more land, I think I also keep the minion of the mighty. All right. Here we go. Brainstorm. Those sure aren't the cards I'm looking for. Not, not super pleased here. So again, I think I'm looking for one specific card still. Like, I can do, like, quote-unquote ship damage with Ink Moth Nexus and, like, try to kill with two scale-ups. Uh, but I, I think I have no time. I'm gonna put those back. Patch a Valk. And I guess Ponder. Uh, nope. Okay. Well, we have uh, we have spun the cantrip wheels and just like totally whipped here. Expect to die this turn. Yeah, here we go. Double dark ritual. 
six mana, seven mana, ten. Oh, yeah. All right. Do do your thing. Uh, I expect this is an ad nauseum that just kills me. Yeah. So opponent can go pretty darn deep here. Uh, burning wish. Okay, they have multiple tutors. I expect that I am dead. I am less good at piecing together the TES lines than I am the ant lines. I, I've played much more ant. Um, but uh, this this sure feels like the sweet embrace of death. Yeah, Burning Wish for tendrils once a lotus petal is cracked. Yep, okay. GG's, I'll concede to that. Alright, let's see what we can do about this. I can bring in some amount of interaction. I can probably bring in these three cards, and I can think about Pissing Needle for Wishclaw Talisman. Um, but honestly, I kind of feel like I'm just trying to like goldfish and do my thing, so I don't really want to sideboard out too many cards. I have so much jank in this deck. Okay. Um, it's it's possible I'm supposed to like sideboard out the minions of minion of the mighties because like minion of the mighty requires like minion plus scale up plus dragon it requires three pieces whereas the other combo is just like infect creature plus blazing shoal i guess that also requires three cards hmm. i have multiple different janky three card combos question mark question mark question mark question mark okay uh, this is a little weird but i think i'm gonna sideboard out my dazes i I don't need to be protecting my own stuff, and days is probably not enough for me to really stop what my opponent is doing on a combo turn. Like, the difference in card quality between a days and one of these is pretty huge. Um, so, it, it's either, like, sideboard out pieces of my jank, or and, like, decrease the chances that I can actually just, like, do the thing and go off or try this. Okay. Um, that's awkward. It's fine if it finds a Blazing Shoal, and it does nothing if it doesn't. I'm on a mulligan. This has no lands. Mulligan. This has no plan. This is a five-card hand. No. Uh, perfect four-card hand. Uh, Ink Moth, Volcanic Island. Yeah, this is, this is very good. So I'll just, uh, do that. A, a Thoughtseize or Duress absolutely destroys this hand. Alright, just passing. Right, which one of these is newly controlled now? This is the one that's newly controlled. This is not. I activate this one. And I crash in. No blocks, and we're 100% just going for it now. We do the thing. Uh, notably, this is not a kill, uh, which is super unfortunate. It's just a lot of damage. Not even a kill next turn. Um, this is a huge complaint that I have about the way the deck is built. Like, when you do the thing, it should kill the opponent. And I did the thing, and it did not kill the opponent. Um, yeah. So, like, that was that was one of the strengths of the modern version of Blazing Shoal, in fact, is that, like, when, when you did the thing, your opponent just died on turn two or turn three. And, like, we're... We're fucking around with a lot of jank, and when we do the jank, it's not lethal. I don't think that's super acceptable. Um, and I'm going to presume we are dead. Uh, there's a Tendrils. Uh, opponent uh, probably kills me. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this should be dead. They have Petal, Petal. LED, Opal, okay, yeah. So they they dump out all those cards, and then they play LED, and then they can use two mana, Burning Wish, and then I have four mana remaining to Tendrils me and kill me, uh, as well as Lethal Storm Count. Okay. Or, or, you know, you can do it that way too. That's, that's fine. That is Lethal Storm, right? Ten, yeah. Unseed. I am expecting this to be an 0-4 drop league. <laughs> okay, um, this one gets to just do the thing, right? Turn one minion of the mighty, turn two, scale up, and then I put in a dragon mage and we'll go from there. Sounds great. 
Here's to hoping for zero interaction whatsoever. All right. So far, so good. All right. I mean, that can, that can represent various interaction, but, like, I sure as hell am going to try. A drop. Scale up. All right. I've gotten force of negation. That's fine. I do not believe it is correct to wait um, and try to find a blue card for the force of will. I just want to jam. I think my opponent's deck will be better at sculpting their hand and finding answers than I will be. Classic punish. That's okay. Like We just have so many non-blue cards in the deck that I don't think I am supposed to just like wait on it. Nope, 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 nope. Undo. Play the Ink Moth, and let's start doing chip damage. I expect my lands to just get blown up by Swords to Plowshares, though. One Infect. Uh, the, the Infect doesn't really matter until my opponent plays... Sorry, until I am nearing lethal. Um, Brainstorm's probably good. Uh, this stuff is not so good. I'm going to pitch a Dragon Mage and put a Ponder on top of my library that I'll redraw next turn. I could Ponder and Shuffle now, but I think I'd rather continue to pressure my opponent with these. That's possibly incorrect. You don't need to attack. Um, but... If I get the chip damage in now before my opponent starts removing my stuff, like maybe I can uh, do something big and flashy at the end of this game and actually try to kill my opponent. All right, Ponder. That's a scale up. It's very good. So I think I'll stack these so that I draw the fetch land next turn. So I think I will go ahead and animate this. I'll try to scale up. All right. We're fighting. The cool thing is that I can, like, so reasonably double force here. Force of will, targeting, force of negation. Pitch ponder with the first one. You fight back. I will now force of will again. Uh, this stops the, the quote-unquote dragon plan of the minion of the mighty. Um, but if this works, my opponent just takes a shit ton of infect damage. And I am good with that, too. Okay, that puts my opponent to 9 Infect. So either one of these connecting is lethal. Alright. Good stuff. Okay. Um, in the dark, I think I like Defense Grid. Well, not in the dark. Um, like I know my opponent is a blue-white control deck, but I don't know some of the uh, particulars yet. Ugh. I guess I'm going to do this thing where I cut the Fury of the Hordes and bring in Defense Grid, and then it's a question of, like, do I want Force Negations or Fluster Storms as well to protect my stuff? I don't think Daze is particularly good. Like, the Daze probably should not be in the deck, and it should probably just be Force of Negations. Bring those in. I don't know that I want to bring in the Fluster as well. Like, it's fine, but, like, because my combos require at least three cards, and sometimes those don't even kill, I don't know that, like can afford to bring in too many cards especially when i'm already sideboarding out some red cards that uh, work towards my blazing shoal count all right how does the opening hand look um opening hand looks great so this is maybe a turn one ponder hand maybe it's an ink moth hand i don't know like i'm not attacking until this defense grid is in play absolutely not and maybe that means that i should just ponder on turn one yeah, this probably just means that I ponder on turn one. I'm looking for a uh, force of will. All right, let's fetch and grab Volcanic Island and ponder. Okay, those are not the things that I am looking for. The extra lands aren't really that bad, especially if something does go wrong. Yeah, this is good enough to keep. Like, I don't mind. It's not the force of will I want to protect defense grid, though. Like, that's that's the easiest way for me to win the game, is, is to find the card force of will. I'm going to shuffle. That's not bad, either. 
right? Not what I'm looking for. Let's try a ye old defense grid. Oh, it resolved. I'm very happy about that. Now my opponent may just have like a prismatic ending to answer it and like I'll be sad. Oh ho. Oh ho. Opponent does not answer my defense grid. They are dead. All right. That does that does not answer defense grid. Uh, my opponent is dead. There's three more to cast, right? Just confirming I know the text of my magic cards. Yes. Yeah. 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 Blazing Shoal. Target this. Pitch the expensive card. And my opponent takes 11 Infect on turn three. In a way that can't be stopped. G G's. Not an 04 league. All right, um, round four opening hand will just kill if I find a red card. I think this is a keep. I have to lead on Scalding Tarn so that if I need to daze, I can daze. Um, but even if I don't find the red card, uh, this is just like scale up attack, scale up attack over two turns. Um, note like multiple scale ups in the same turn doesn't do anything because it changes the base power and toughness. Am I gonna get chaliced? I'm gonna get chaliced. All right, uh, we're gonna draw a red card and win the game then. Oh, is there more? Oh god. Oh. Uh, this was a very good hand. If you shoot. All right. Well, land go. I think I'm okay if I can get this blighted agent into play before my opponent echoes. <clears throat> They can just echo, well, will they want to echo, I guess is the question. Yes. Yes is the answer they would like to echo. I would not like today's. How is the new hand? Uh, the new hand is arguably better than the old hand. All right? Yeah, like I play Inkmoth Nexus, and then I have a turn with a, a kill with Blazing Shoal and Dragon Tyrant the next turn. That's pretty sick. Oh, and another Blazing Shoal. Now we can uh, pitch the minion of the mighty as well, you know, because um, that's necessary. Then I expect my opponent to end step crack this bobble. Uh, yep, there we go. So I am afraid of like Karn ensnaring bridge. That's that's the sort of thing that uh, can beat me pretty easily. A walking ballista um, would also be a little, a little savage. And this doesn't increase toughness, this only increases power. Okay, a land drop, four mana, maybe an Urza. A Narset. Narset is fine. I guess I'm a little afraid of uh, another echo happening. You know, uh, for obvious reasons, that would be good once uh, Narset is in play. Okay. This is five mana. Oh no. Okay, Sai is fine. Oh shit, Sai is not fine. Do these fly? Fuck. Is this trample? No. Hey. Um, things are not fine. I think I'm dead. Like, now I need to find a Blighted Agent, and I can't, like, cantrip or Minion of the Mighty because of the Chalice. Oh, yeah, I'm fucked. Alright. Huh. Oh, I've revealed the Dragon Tyrant. That's unfortunate. Alright. Um... I think this one's over. Like, I guess I'll play it out and wait because it is possible I can find the Blighted Agent, but my opponent has all the resources in the world to just absolutely bully me. Ugh. Damn. What a roller coaster of a game, though. Like, I had a turn one natural kill, and then my opponent got me into... Or sorry, I had a turn two natural kill, and then my opponent echoed me into a different, what was that going to be, like turn three natural kill, and then they echoed that away, and yeah. Okay, uh, I, I will not be able to beat this Karn. One, two, three, four, five, plus uh, Emery is six mana. That just Mycos and Lattice locks me right now. Uh, just no outs to it. All right. Um, I want some number of ways to interact with my opponent's stuff. Some amount of this stuff is okay. I can consider Graftigger's Cage, but again, like, 
I kind of need to keep all my various, uh, like, janky cards so that I have some semblance of an ability to win. I think I'm going to do kind of what I've been doing of, like, cutting the Dazes and the Fury of the Hordes, and I'll bring in five cards. I'll go with the Abrades and the Force of Negations, and then I'll round things out with one Fizzling Needle. It's possible I should go deeper in cutting some of these other plans, but... I, this deck just requires so much work to actually produce a win that I don't know that I can cut pieces of the win. I, I think I am relying on the London Mulligan for my power. Uh, this hand does nothing. Mulligan. Um, this hand is close. So if this hand d draws a dragon, I get to just make it on turn two. Alternatively, if this hand just draws any big dumb red card, I can get a decently fast Blazing Shoal start. I, I think I'll keep this hand, despite the fact that it has problems. This fetch is super awkward. I don't need this to necessarily attack. Uh, I'm just going to lead on Ink Moth and pass the turn. Then if I draw a big dumb red thing, I potentially just have a turn two. Alright. How bad is it? Oh, it looks like it's going to be bad. Uh, I mean, Urza is not good for me. Urza, generally speaking, great magic card. Oh, well, there's the punish for not playing the minion on turn one. Um, what dual land am I getting? The scale up no longer becomes reasonable, so this probably... Eh. So we're basically all in on drawing a decent card to pitch with Blazing Shoal, naturally. Got a decent number of those. Um, my dual land needs to get blue for Blighted Agent, but beyond that, it, it doesn't matter too much. Probably blue-red, uh, because I have a couple of abrades boarded in. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll bash in for one with the old Ink Moth Nexus. At some point, I can do some anemic things like Blazing Shoal, pitching a Blazing Shoal or a Minion of the Mighty if I get, like, within striking range of finishing my opponent off. Um, but it sure as hell is no Invigorate. And this is one of my problems with the deck, right? Like, we have six different pieces that contribute to one of our various combos, and I can't actually execute any of said combos. There, There's too many moving parts in this deck. Let's rehydrate. Delicious. And now let's see what sort of suffering my opponent has in mind for me. Earn levels of suffering? Oh, five mana. Oh, just spending the dice with Urza. Well, that's great. I am quote unquote only taking six damage this turn. Okay. Um playing this probably accelerates my clock. Probably. I say probably because the math is a little bit wonky with like double blazing shoal, but bad things to pitch to it. Um, but I miss one point of damage this turn, which I immediately recoup next turn, and then any turn from there, I'll start gaining. Ooh, all right. Well, there's another reason for the probably. Oh, and they use the LED to cast the Brazen Borrower because uh, they are hellbent. I respect the hell out of that play. That's something I might have missed myself, being honest. Alright, looks like my opponent is going to go for another... Oh, nope, JK, it's Karn. Um, I assume this beats me one way or another. Either immediately or in another turn cycle. My opponent is having a good long think here, so that may mean that this is not immediate death. Six mana? Oh, I just get Latticed immediately. Why did that take so long? Unseed. Alright, GG's. Okay, final round. Uh, good luck to you two. So I think I'm supposed to play Ink Moth Nexus pass and try to go for the turn two kill. And if the turn two doesn't kill doesn't work, we can talk about Minion of the Mighty. All right. Land go. Also, I'm supposed to play this slower and use Minion of the Mighty as like a bait spell, but I I think if I'm getting wins with this deck, I try to steal them. All right, Island, under. So if my opponent is playing, well, rather, if my opponent has a counter spell, 
Uh, this turn cycle will be real good for them. Ooh. Do I play more slowly? Nah. Let's YOLO. I have pretty good non-YOLO options for the future if it doesn't work out. All right, fire it up. Opponent it says, hmm, not playing your bread and butter DG and T. Well, I am playing the death side of the deck. <laughs> Aww. That's a shame. Opponent takes an infect. Um, so we're probably playing against uh, Blue Red Delver. Uh huh. Okay. Looks like prediction was accurate. Now it becomes a question of like, do I want to attack with the Ink Moth Nexus or do I just want to deploy a Blighted Agent next turn? I think I want to play a Blighted Agent. All right. In it goes. All right. Uh, we have gotten a Force of Will. And now I will play the Minion of the Mighty. How oh, neat this is a Kobold. I haven't actually looked at the creature type all league. Um, note, I expect to lose this matchup in devastating fashion. Like, my opponent has counter spells and wastelands and a quick clock. Um, I, I think they just have so many ways to interact with me. Yep, Exhibit A. Like, our creature got countered, this gets wastelanded, and then I'm just kind of stuck. I mean, like, I'll make you do it. Okay. That's all fine. I will play a new one. I will attack with my minion of the mighty. I got zero damage in. I felt good. Mm hmm. Well, I have some dragons. I am about to get a land destroyed by a lightning bolt. Here I go. Oh, it actually worked. Great. But again, this is another one of those games where, like, I have four different pieces that, like, work towards a combo. And I still just don't have the ability to, like, do a combo thing. So, like, normally when you're playing an A plus B combo deck, like, you have two sides of the combo, right? And, like, when you draw multiple pieces of the same side, it feels bad. But this is, like, I have, like, an A plus B plus B, A plus B plus C combo deck where a lot of the pieces, um, I don't think I want to fetch and shock them back. Um, because I want Trop with this. Yeah, so I'm I'm playing too many moving parts where they all don't uh, work together. Alright, so this can be a way to get a kill, a sneaky kill later. Um, so like, for example, if I draw a scale up, scale up plus Fury of the Horde could be a kill. Alright, this Delver deck has a lot of land and no threat. There's a threat. Alright. Um, days is not what I am looking for. It's just unlikely to be effective, um, given how much mana my opponent has. Alright, yeah. Alright, so this sets up to flip the Delver. Force of Negation. Uh, which is honestly pretty devastating. That means, like, Fury of the Horde or a Blazing Shoal isn't actually going to resolve. Yeah. I'm going to take five here. All right. Uh, Ragavan exiled a tropical island. That's fine. I have multiple in my deck. What you got? I'm honestly just scared of more creatures at this point. Oh, fuck. If this is a Merc Tide, uh, I am probably dead. Note the days here not doing anything because of the treasure. Yep. Uh, I think I'm on uh, basically no outs. I'll take a draw. Um... Well, this has to be just the world's most insane brainstorm. This doesn't this doesn't do anything. I think because of the force of negation, I'm just dead. I guess I guess I can like try to pull together something that works. This days isn't gonna get anything done. Fuck, man, I can't even use this fetch because then I'll die to Ragavan. Yeah, okay. I go ahead and concede then. Like, I can put back days and a dragon, um, but if I can't fetch his stuff away, then I can't put together anything that, like, cobbles together a kill for next turn. Alright. Um, 
board out the same five cards. I think I've boarded out every round. I would like defense grids, and I guess I play a couple of... You know what, maybe I'm not supposed to just deal with their creatures. Like, maybe this is just, like, I combo off or I don't. Uh, this, is not, this is not good. My opponent's deck is so interactive, and I am a jank pile. Maybe I'm not going to win the counter war most of the time. Maybe instead let's do something that protects an Ink Moth Nexus. Um, yeah, I, I'm just not happy with the options that this deck has for everything. <laughs> Uh, despite the fact that this has, yeah, like this, uh, mulligan. Yeah, like, look, look at how many pieces of combos I have without actually successfully doing anything. Uh, I can't keep this one lander versus Delver. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get lucky, draw red card, get a turn two with force backup. That's, that's my current plan. All right, didn't get wastelanded. That's definitely step one here. Uh, okay. I, I think I am not going to deviate from force, and I'm very glad I did not. YOLO. Opponent needs two castable counter spells. Blazing Shoal. Pitch Dragon Tyrant. Right, there's a force. All force back. Oh, we actually win one? Oh, we win one. Okay, cool. Well, it uh, sure did work that time. There's so many different ways that I could sideboard. Like, on the draw, I can play Blazing Volleys and Abrades and try to answer the early threats. Uh, but again, I think I'm stealing these games early or I'm not winning. Um, a Brainstorm. I mean, alternatively, maybe on the draw, like, the Minion of the Mighties are, like, never gonna work. And I just play... Mm, answers to my opponent's stuff. This can give me like a braid. Blazing volley, blazing volley. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, so this has a turn two with no backup. Um, I'm going to be keeping this hand. The, the pace is blistering, which is worth something. And I always, oh, this is, this is quite good. All right, so let's go Nexus Needle. I'm about to get dazed. Yeah, shit. Alright. Um, this hand is considerably weaker if I get Wastelanded. Uh, oh, there is no way in the fuck you are supposed to pass the turn there. No way in fuck. Now I just get to do this. Like You, you let me use mana that you could have denied me. And like, if you let me keep this now... I'll be better able to play around like the dazes and such of the world. Sure. That's fine. Like you have to have a force of will or force of negation or you die this turn. <laughs> Sorry, you have to have four blue cards in hand, two of which are force of will or force of negation. I, I, I mean, I guess I could like get gut shotted by something stupid. Cast Blazing Shoal. Pitch the Ur Dragon. All right, I'm getting forced. I will force back. Are you dead? Oh, we got the nice in chat. GG's. I literally do not believe that we got some of our play points back with this deck. I, I am in actual disbelief. We got lucky. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. This is a classic example of trying to do too much. Um, and I just want to remind the viewers that there also was a Hull Breacher Days Undoing package in this deck before I, like, took out a portion of what this deck was doing. I think the Minion of the Mighty is a really cool, like, build-around card, but I don't know. There's so many different moving parts that everything doesn't quite work in this deck, right? So, like, when you have the Infect side, like, Scale Up is a huge power-up, but it doesn't kill in one turn the way a Blazing Shoal does. And, like, you can have Minion of the Mighty and Scale Up or Blazing Shoal, but then not the Dragon to dump in. And, like, when you have Dragons and Infect things, like, there's so many different ways that you can have, like, three or four cards that contribute to a combo kill and not actually have a combo kill. Uh, and I think that's rough. So if I were going to rebuild this deck, I would rebuild it in one of two directions. I would either choose to make it a like, cheat a fatty deck with, like, Minion of the Mighty and either, like, Sneak Attack or Show and Tell or Eureka as redundancy. 
or I would make it a Blazing Shoal Infect deck. But I think trying to do both of those at the same time is just so ambitious, especially when, uh, like, Dragon Mage plus Blazing Shoal is not a, like, one-turn kill. So, like, I 100% would want the fourth Dragon Tyrant over the Dragon Mages in this deck. And if there's other big dragons that cost um, nine or more, um, those would be preferable to the Dragon Mages. I assume these were in the deck because of like the one of Hall Breacher, but like, come on, that's a one of Hall Breacher. I, I don't think that's a, that's a realistic plan. Um, days felt pretty bad in this deck. Like, we're not this like super low to the ground Delver style deck in a lot of matchups. And like, I have some mana problems in the first place. And a lot of times you want to lead on an Ink Moth as well so like you can't daze in the first turn cycle anyway um i don't i don't know that daze is a winner here um i also feel like you would want the fourth blighted agent in this deck just to have that unblockable ability because as we saw in the match versus uh the the psi like once your opponent has flyers like you you don't trample you don't have the uh, like invigorate berserk side of the equation um so like one one thopter or a flicker whisper something like that or a flipped delver just like shuts off your combo kill potential since you can't trample over um as far as the sideboard goes this sideboard was better than what was originally submitted but i just feel so incredibly awkward about the main deck that sideboarding's hard like if i board out the minions of the mighty i have fewer ways to take advantage of scale up um so, like, the tools that were there that were, were okay, especially Defense Grid and Pithing Needle. Um, I feel kind of medium about some of this other stuff. Um, anyway, I hope that all is uh, useful for you. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please, cl please click the like button. It helps me out a lot. Um, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content seven days a week. If you want to tinker with this deck, check out the link to Top Deck in the video description, and my donation information is there if you want to get your own deck on this channel. All right, have a great rest of the day.